So now we're at chapter 27 of the Tiger Rising. The first key slid into the first log so smoothly that it made Rob dizzy with amazement. It was going to be so easy to let the tiger go. Hurry, Sistine said to him. Hurry up, get the other locks. He opened the second lock and the third, and then he took them off one by one and had them, handed them to Sistine, who laid them on the ground. Now open the door, she said. Rob's heart pounded and fluttered in his chest. What if he eats us? He asked. He won't, said Sistine. He'll leave us alone out of gratitude. We're his emancipators. Rob flung the door wide. Get out of the way, he shouted, and they both jumped back from the door and waited. But the tiger ignored them. He continued to pace back and forth in the cage, oblivious to the open door. Go on, Rob said to him. You're free, Sistine whispered, but the tiger did not even look in the direction of the door. Sistine cut forward, crept forward and grabbed hold of the cage. She shook it. Get out, she screamed. Come on, she said, turning to Rob. Help me. Help me get him out. Rob grabbed hold of the fence and shook it. Get, he said. The tiger stopped pacing and turned to stare at them both, clinging like monkeys to the cage. Go on, Rob shouted, suddenly furious. He shook the cage harder. He yelled. He put his head back and howled. And he saw that the sky above them was thick with clouds. And that made him even angrier. He yelled louder. He shouted at the dark sky. He shook the cage as hard as he could. Sistine put a hand on his arm. Shh, she said. He's leaving. Watch. As he stared, the tiger stepped with grace and delicacy out of the cage. He put his nose up and sniffed. He took one tiny step and then another. Then he stopped and stood still. Sistine clapped her hands, and the tiger turned and looked back at them both, his eyes blazing. And then he started to run. He ran so fast it looked to Rob like he was flying. His muscles moved like a river. It was hard to believe that a cage had ever contained him. It didn't seem possible. The tiger went leaping through the grass, moving farther and farther away from Rob and Sistine. He looked like the sun rising and setting again and again. And watching him go, Rob felt his own heart rising and falling, beating in time. Wow. So this week's questions are, uh, number one, what does the word emancipators mean? Um, page 102, it said, he'll leave us alone out of gratitude. We're his emancipators. Number two. Uh, what is Sistine's reasoning for why the tiger would not attack them? Do you believe a wild animal will keep itself from attacking for this reason? Uh, number three, as the tiger runs, what type of connection is Rob feeling toward the tiger? And your bonus question is, the author likes to write similes. Find a simile in chapter 27. There are more than one, but just find one simile in chapter 27. And a little extra, okay, you might have to pause it here if you want to answer them here. Uh, as a little math problem, we have uh, Mr. Reyes has 40 marshmallows. He puts the marshmallows on six sticks to roast. How many marshmallows are on each stick? Um, are there any left over? If so, how many? So don't forget you, uh, you can do it on a separate sheet of paper. Um, Describe your strategy, draw your strategy out, and tomorrow we'll, we'll share it. Um, what's your solution, your number of symptoms, and then uh, go ahead and explain your uh, what you did to solve this problem. Okay?